I hit up a long time friend the morning before this vid because before I officially took a stance on this ancient topic, I just needed to be sure. I'd spent my childhood watching Kobe terrorize his team, my team, hell, everyone's team is seen for a good stretch, and somehow around a decade later, I found myself agreeing with NBA Twitter of all places that, yeah, LeBron James had in fact eclipsed the glamorous career of Kobe Bryant. So my friend answered, and it was something along the lines of the idea that personally he would take Kobe, but he'd submitted to the fact that LeBron is the greater player and that he does rank higher. And today, after a long, long time of never really taking a solid stance, I'm going to explain to you why that's the exact answer I had in my head before he'd even said it. And if you want to see Kobe win his sixth ring next year after he signs with the Warriors, since apparently they're just going to get everybody, the best place to get your tickets is with the SeatGeek app. SeatGeek app pulls tickets from all over the web and has them in one place, so buying is really easy, and it also assures you're going to be getting the best value for your ticket. While you're doing your search, each ticket is ranked with a score from 1 to 100 that lets you know if you're getting a good deal or not for your purchase, and on top of that, it gives you a detailed view of what you would see from your seat if you were actually there. If you're interested in downloading this app, the links are going to be in both the comment section and highlighted in the description. If you're still on the fence, consider using my promo code DOM2K to get $20 off your first purchase. This is the app I used when I went to the Warriors and Magic game last season and it made the whole process really simple, so I definitely recommend this for you. This video is not going to be like the LeBron and Jordan comparison I did a couple of months ago. That one had a ton to do with stats and things that you could really compute, but today I just wanted to speak more from what I've experienced and learned through following these careers so closely. So why have I finally come around to putting myself on record with this debate? Kobe and LeBron has been a brutally debated topic since back in the land before time when I was still in middle school and the NBA was airing the puppet commercials in anticipation of a finals that would sadly never happen. It hasn't really seemed to slow down since then, and the only thing that's changed is that Kobe heavily declined during the debate and eventually retired, which means he's no longer here on the court to defend himself, and now he just takes to Twitter to passively aggressively tell you where he stands by retweeting trolls with his two cents. But because he's no longer on the court to defend himself or to prove haters wrong, there's a growing number of people who never watched his best days critiquing him, and another group that is just flat out haters and they did see him play, but they're still trying to convince you that he was never that great, and that somehow he shouldn't even be mentioned in the same breath as LeBron. However, having experienced both of their careers up close and having seen them both terrorize multiple teams and fan bases, mine included, I can at least agree that LeBron is greater than Kobe and that he does in fact rank higher. For me, it starts at a base level and has to do with, in general, the type of players that they prove to be throughout their careers. Watching LeBron, you've got this guy that seemed to be able to do absolutely anything on the court he's wanted to through skill, brute strength, intelligence, and unselfishness. Kobe didn't have the same strength or size, obviously, but if you listen to his opponents, their takes roughly equate to the idea that he could dominate you through being at very least the second most skilled player of all time, combined with his sheer will and determination. But in this debate, Kobe's sheer will and determination is where I'm already able to branch off and start to discuss what's made LeBron greater in my eyes. Over the last year and a half, I've done so much studying on Kobe because he's very entertaining to listen to in my opinion, but through that, I gained the sense that this unbreakable, unwavering will kind of worked against him at certain points throughout his career. Some of you may start to recognize this as the infamous selfish label that's been following him around for a really long time now. Well, he's also probably the hardest working player of all time, and as you learned about him, it basically comes down to it was his way or the highway. I mean, as a regular sized shooting guard, how else could you muster up the courage to fathom fighting Shaq without a weapon? But from what I've learned, what I remember about him, and with the advantage of hindsight, I can honestly say that his most admirable qualities of determination and will actually worked against his career at many key points. Hell, look no further than the rift early on in his career with Shaq. I've already made a video explaining that rift and showing why their breakup wasn't solely on either one of them, but when it came down to it, Kobe has said with his own mouth that he simply wasn't going to continue to play in Shaq's shadow and had people say that he couldn't win without him. And even before it came to that, a lot of their rift had to do with them both being these gigantic alpha personalities. Shaq was larger than life and outgoing, and Kobe was just 1000% about his work, and it was difficult for him to relate to a guy like Shaq who didn't share those same values. So when you put those two in a locker room together, you start to understand why a duo with the potential of around six rings ended up with three and a finals loss. And like anyone else, I've often thought about, well, what if it was LeBron instead of Kobe? What if he'd have been drafted with a top three center in history and his career was molded from that? 
I never get over dramatic and call 8 or 10 rings because I always have questions about how LeBron would have fit with a paint clogging, non shooting center when he couldn't shoot that well himself for a while. But I don't have any questions about how that duo would have coexisted and reached its potential. It goes deeper than just LeBron sharing the ball more than Kobe because he's a shooting guard and it's not his job. Kobe had it built into his system that sometimes nobody else on the court mattered and he was just going to do it himself. That's part of the killer mentality you always hear about, the black mamba, but as I'm going to discuss later, that definitely held him back more than people realize. And so when you think about LeBron, were there times like 2011 where he wasn't enough of a killer? Are there questions about the LeBron system hurting the players around him today? Sure, but the one thing you never had to worry about was LeBron shooting his team out of the game. You never had to question if he was going to make the right basketball play, and you never had to worry about whether he was going to put his own goals over team goals. But it doesn't end there. You know, I absolutely love Kobe's killer mentality, and despite NBA Twitter spending day and night just trying to convince you that it's nothing more than being inefficient or a ball hog, you can talk to a number of his victims and learn that it was probably a little bit deeper than that. However, there is no ignoring that his mentality had its faults and that it did have this nasty tendency to devolve into a one-man show. So where this matters is on the biggest stages, the playoffs, the finals, those areas where legacies are made. Yeah, by now, LeBron has lost almost as many times as Kobe has even been to the finals, but look closely at their legacy-defining moments. I gave this more thought during the 2018 playoffs because after I watched LeBron string together probably the best consistent basketball I've ever watched, I also took note of just how effortlessly he was making everything look. Not only was he just flat out dominating game 7s or toying with the Raptors as if he was in a pickup game, but for most of his performances, despite his age and sky high usage rating, he really looked like he was in a scrimmage sometimes. Yes, these NBA hardwood classic performances that he was putting on, he was literally just stringing them together like he was taking a stroll through the park. And then in game 1 of the finals, for what very easily could have turned out to be the biggest game of his career, he put up a Mozart-like masterpiece that nearly stole home court advantage from the greatest team of all time. So then I thought back, how many times have I seen LeBron just put up career-altering performances with ease in these past years? And the fact that so many of them come off the top of my head just said everything it needed to and more. Game 5 in the 2016 Finals, Game 7 2016 Finals, Game 6 and 7 against the Spurs in 2013, Game 5 against Detroit in 07, Game 7 against Boston in 08, and those are just his classic performances off the top. Those don't even count the playoff series that he just dominated overall as his team breezed to the next round. And from there, I only needed to read one more thing to make it all clear to me. I cracked open the book of basketball because I just wanted another opinion on LeBron and Kobe, and one line in particular stuck out to me. In short, it's said that in Kobe's three finals from 2008 to 2010, you could argue that he didn't have one classic or all-time performance in any one of those series. Now, I would disagree because I can clearly remember off the top of my head him torching the Orlando Magic in Game 1 of 2009, and I'd also like to add that he had plenty of great moments in those playoff runs in general that didn't include the finals. But the line resonated with me because as great as Kobe was, and as high as I have him ranked, there was some truth to it. When you think about the flat out signature games that define a career, not only does Kobe not have many of those, nor could he crank them out at the rate that LeBron James did, but he actually performed poorly in some of them. Two that immediately come to mind are in the entire 2004 finals when he all but shot Los Angeles out of the Detroit series, and in 2010 when he fell right into the Celtics hands by taking the impossibly difficult shots that the defense wanted him to take. I've done a video about that game and just how close it came to being one of the biggest black marks on his entire career. These days, I'm not one of the people who harps on his field goal percentage because at the end of the day, he found a way to get it done. But in this conversation, I think you can see how something like that matters. It matters to me because when looking at them as individual players, and if I'm trying to find flaws or break them down, that's just one place where I can find more wrong about Kobe than I can about LeBron. And at this point, James's overall record of 3-6 and six in the finals has a lot more to do with the fact that he's been in some really unfortunate situations team-wise as opposed to him not just showing up. And with Kobe, I'm not going to stoop to the level of saying that he was carried by Shaq, but let's put it this way. In all seven finals that he ever went to in his career, he never didn't have the team necessary to pull it off or to make it competitive. So when you think about something like his horrible Game 4 performance in 08 that led to LA blowing a lead to go down 3-1 to Boston, those are black marks we don't hear much about. And that's important because when I talked about LeBron and Jordan in the finals, I mentioned that Jordan pretty much has a stainless record in the finals whereas LeBron has a series like 2011. 
Well, Kobe may not have something like 2011, but 2004 is pretty damn close. And 08 wasn't that great of a series for him either. And in the only playoffs that Kobe played during his prime without good teams, they both got dispatched in the first round. Now, disclaimer, we're not about to put so much weight on that in this conversation because while it is a fact, playing the Suns in the first round is much different than playing somebody like the Nets. But I also do strongly believe that if you replace LeBron with Kobe and put him on those Cavs teams in the East that didn't have much support to work with, I don't see them going as far as LeBron took them. So I've always hated that people try to compare what LeBron did with subpar talent in the East to what Kobe did with subpar talent in the West because obviously getting to the finals in the West has always been much harder, that path has been much more difficult. But yeah, I do agree that it's kind of difficult to see how Kobe would take these Cavalier teams as far as LeBron did. I think in years like 07, 2015 when other stars were hurt, or even this year, there's no way Kobe could have kept his cool and worked with those pieces to bring them to the finals. It's not really just my opinion, it's literally what he showed throughout his career. Because of the type of players those two were and their temperaments, Kobe surrounded by no talent went into complete do-it-myself mode and that almost never works against superior talent, and yeah, it usually resulted in him being called a horrible teammate. LeBron surrounded by those same minimally useful pieces would get everything he could out of them and by the time the night was over, he'd have a large and efficient scoring night while also having his assists and rebounds that gave the team a chance to win. And the amazing thing about it is, when you look at what actually happened in the years that LeBron made the finals with his teams being overmatched, he consistently played well enough to give them a chance. Not so much in like 2007, but think more of 2015 which we all assumed was going to be a sweep, right? For a second there, it looked like LeBron was about to lead them to victory. Now, there's no participation trophies being given out here, but the fact that he even had them putting up a fight speaks volumes for its individual comparisons here. Hell, even the 2018 finals could have been made interesting if not for… yeah, you, you get the point, <laughs> let's move on. So after all of this, everything I just said, you've gotta acknowledge that by his career's end, literally the only thing LeBron will not have passed Kobe Bryant in, assuming whatever team he joins this summer doesn't surpass Golden State, would be championships. I'm on record in the MJ video saying championships matter, but I'm also on the record for saying that there were plenty of other factors you had to count as well, which is why in that video I didn't even mention rings until the end. This might very well end with Kobe having more rings than LeBron, but it's also going to end with LeBron having more MVPs, more finals MVPs, points, assists, rebounds, steals, blocks, higher field goal percentage, more all-time performances, more accomplished with less talent, better longevity, more all-NBA teams. <laughs> Basically more of literally everything in less time played. For me, that's where I absolutely draw the line. You can always debate who was better at the game of basketball, who had a better approach to the game as far as mentality, but you simply can't argue with facts. And when I see that LeBron has really just played the game of basketball better than Kobe did, and will have eclipsed almost all of his records in a shorter amount of time, there's just no way I can truthfully argue that Kobe is greater than LeBron. I'm always going to prefer Kobe just because he was the original guy who terrorized my team and I always just like his mentality and I like his basketball IQ, but as far as rankings and who would be greater, I don't even think Kobe has a case to be greater than LeBron anymore at all honestly. And before I end the video, that's where I want to draw one more line. I said Kobe doesn't have a case to be greater than LeBron in my opinion, I never said not to mention those two in the same breath. Time is passing and people are getting carried away with what's happening now. LeBron is still far and wide the game's greatest player today, he's being put up against Jordan the same way Kobe was at one point and people are just forgetting the Black Mamba. They're no longer studying his game or his accomplishments and I'm noticing a popular trend where people just try to act oblivious to his greatness. Look, don't get it twisted, LeBron may have eclipsed him but I don't think LeBron himself would agree with those of you that try to say those two shouldn't even be mentioned in the same conversation. They're two of the game's greatest of all time. They're two players that drew serious debates for an extended period of time about how they compared to Jordan. That alone puts them in the same conversation. So in the end, I think that Kobe had some golden opportunities to cement himself as the greatest of all time. But I think that his ego and that his unbreakable will got in the way of those aspirations because it led to things like him putting the official end to the duo with Shaq, becoming too much of a one-on-one -on -one player at times, and not to mention it also led to numerous injuries that wound up being his downfall. On one hand, he gets a gigantic boost for pushing through those injuries, playing with broken fingers and all those knee problems he had. But on the other, without those injuries, there were many more records for him to break. 
And that's one place that LeBron is going to have on him is longevity because he didn't suffer those same injuries and although we've always got on him for the rest thing, it's really paid off. And at this point, literally the only thing his career is missing is a great finals record. Championships definitely matter and don't let anyone ever tell you different. But in a case like this where championships are one of the only things a player has over the other, it's time to concede. They're two of the greatest of all time, yes, but one is undoubtedly greater than the other.